Hi there everyone, my name is Christian Eschbach and welcome to another one of my album reviews. This one wraps up what started as a Black Sabbath triple shot turned into a Dio triple shot. Five albums later, we are finishing up here with Dio's Master of the Moon Special Edition reissue. It's really fancy. It's done up like this cool little booklet. You know, all this cool little booklet-y stuff inside. Really nice. I like it. The artwork is cool. The lyrics in there are kind of nice. You know, it, it, the artwork's cool, but it's nothing special, okay? Um... I don't have a lot of Dio catalog, especially Dio solo catalog. Um, best of and Holy Diver. Right? That's the album I'm thinking of is Holy Diver. Yeah, Holy Diver. <laughs> That's all I had for a back catalog. Uh, then uh, Ronnie James Dio passed away. They start re releasing the back catalog. Master of the Moon and Angry Machines were the two I picked up. I'm going to do Master of the Moon. Leave Angry Machines for the next time I want to do a Dio triple shot. Interesting album. Um, released in... Jeez, I don't know how you're here. Let's see if we can get us a year. Released in 2004. So... I think if this album had been released in a different time, it would have definitely done better. It wasn't a bad album. Not a great album, but not a bad album. Uh, the album opens up with... Okay, there's a bonus... I'm going to do the bonus disc first, okay? So there's a regular disc and then the bonus disc. Bonus disc is all live stuff. Master of the Moon Tour 2004-2005. Got Heaven and Hell, Rainbow in the Dark, Rock and Roll Children, The Eyes, and Prisoner of Paradise. Okay, Heaven and Hell. I have got four different live versions of this because anything that has Dio on it where there's live stuff as bonus material, Heaven and Hell is included. <laughs> Whether it be Black Sabbath or it be Dio, Heaven and Hell is included. So, and, and each variation is different. Now, you're not going to beat the original Black Sabbath lineup doing Heaven and Hell, but this version is pretty decent. I really didn't like this one little bit different. Close to the Sabbath version. Not as much like Dio when he first went solo in the 80s. Uh, Rainbow in the Dark. This version is not the best version. It's, it's okay for a live version. Rock and Roll Children's okay. The Eyes is actually one of the tracks off this album. And of all the tracks on this album, The Eyes is the one I kind of am surprised that they included. And Prisoner of Paradise is alright as well. For live tracks, they're okay. All right. Now we get into the rest of the album, the actual album itself. Track one, One More for the Road. Good way to open up the album. Very, very typical Dio, really. And I'll be honest, One More for the Road and... There's another track on here. I really similar formatting in here. Uh, there's a couple tracks in here. They really have that very typical Dio kind of formatting in here. Uh, One more for the road kind of moves right into Master of the Moon, which is the title track of the album. And Master of the Moon, I enjoy Master of the Moon. It's not a bad song. Um, once again, though. Nothing really kind of special for Dio. Nothing that really stands out and pops. You know, it, it's standard affair at this point. Uh, the End of the World. It's good when the album's playing. I kind of blank on it outside of the album playing. Shivers. I actually really dig Shivers. Uh, Shivers, a lot of people might say that Shivers isn't anything special. I really like it, though. I really dig it. Out of all the songs on this album, it's probably the one that kind of sticks with me the most. And that's only because, honestly, it reminds me of Mistreated from... Uh, was Mistreated Purple or was it Rainbow? I don't know. I can't remember at the moment. Ah, 
Richie Blackmore song all the way around. Uh, I, I want to say Rainbow because it's Dio that I'm pretty sure was singing and Dio did not do Deep Purple. So, um, But Mistreated and Shivers really kind of have a similar vibe to it. And I really dig Mistreated as well, so that's kind of why I go with it. Uh, Shivers, the comparison to Mistreated would be if Mistreated was kind of dark and broody. Like, this album almost sounds like it should have been from around, like, 96, 97, maybe as late as 98. It's really got that dark, broody, post-grunge kind of feel. Um, then the next track after that would be The Man Who Would Be King. The Man Who Would Be King and One More For The Road and Master of The Moon, they all kind of have that similar vibe to them. So if you like One More For The Road, you like Master of The Moon, chances are you'll like The Man Who Would Be King. You know, they all have that standard kind of D.O.-esque layout format. Then it goes into The Eyes, which was surprisingly one of the live bonus tracks. The Eyes isn't bad. Uh, it is a little bit different, I think, than a lot of the other stuff on this album. But, you know, it's nothing spectacular to me. Uh, Living the Lie is alright. It's a good album cut, I guess. I Am is another one that's, you know, I guess a good album cut. Uh, Death by Love isn't bad. And then the album finishes off with In Dreams, which is a decent finish, actually. I, I really like it as a finisher. Uh, the whole way around, this is a album for Dio fans. I don't think that this is a standard... And if you're a metal fan, if you're a Dio fan, if you are a metal fan, especially, you know, if you like, you know, Rainbow, you like Heaven and Hell, Black Sabbath, uh, you like Dio solo stuff, the early stuff like Holy Diver and that, there's a good probability you're going to like this, honestly. If you're not big on any of that stuff, you're not going to like this. End of story. Um... Shivers, I definitely would put on playlists. Master of the Moon, I would probably put on playlists. The Man Who Would Be King, I might put on a playlist. The rest of the album, to me, is while I'm listening to the album. It's not a bad album, by any stretch of the imagination. It's just nothing special. You know, it's nothing spectacular. There's nothing to write home about. There's nothing on here that shows anything that's giant growth progression or anything like that for Dio. It is your standard affair for Dio. Honestly, it is. Um, there are songs on here that if, you know, there were other Dio albums that hadn't been previously released, may, you know, like if this, if this album had come out solo for Dio before uh, Holy Diver had come out, we may not have ever gotten Holy Diver. Maybe, you know, Holy Diver, that's the thing is, you know, when you look at Dio's older catalog, Holy Diver, definitely, who masterpiece for Dio, uh, the Heaven and Hell album, which I've already covered, fantastic, you know, it has some moments in there, uh, I cover Richie Blackmore's Rainbow, same thing, it has some great moments in there, but a lot of kind of filler, I find that happens a lot with Dio, uh, at least compared to when I listen to other stuff. Like if I listen to Dio Sabbath versus listening to Aussie Sabbath, I generally like an entire Aussie Sabbath album, a Dio Sabbath album I'll be hitting this with. You know, Aussie album, not all Aussie albums, let's be very clear. Some Aussie albums are not good Aussie albums. And I only use Aussie as a comparison here because the Sabbath thing, right? Um... You know, there's not a lot of other comparisons I can really use that have the longevity because, you know, I could mention, you know, Coverdale and White Snake, but Coverdale and White Snake kind of disappeared after the 80s for the most part, right? Um, you know, except for when you had the Coverdale page crossover. What I'm trying to get at is when I when you do the comparison, Dio definitely has himself in a niche European metal, very European metal. So as someone who's big on the North American side of things or someone who was raised, 
you know, on what I like to call Detroit rock. Um, I, I can't overly recommend this album for most people. I enjoy it. I will definitely listen to it here and there off and on. It's just when I'm in the mood for this kind of music that it'll get put on. It's the type of album that Tracy would definitely listen to more often than I would because Tracy likes bands like Avantasia, um, Stra uh, I want to say Stradivarius. I could be wrong. Uh, uh, yeah, stuff like that. You know, whenever I pull out the power metal or the European metal or, you know, the symphonic metal, stuff like that, that's usually out of Tracy's collection. This is the type of stuff that would belong right in there with that. It would mix right into it. And I feel the same way about those albums I do about a lot of those. You have some really good albums. You've got some, or you got some really good albums with great tracks the whole way through. But they're not tracks for everybody, and they're tracks that are just meant for when you're listening to the album. Anyways, folks, uh, that is my view. That is my opinion. Those are my thoughts. This is Dio's Man on the Moon. Or Master of the Moon. Sorry, Master of the Moon. Uh, let me know what you think in the comment section. That is what the comment section is for. I've also got that like button, that subscribe button. If you could hit those, that would help both of us out. Uh, there is a share button. That's not bad. The Patreon link. If you click on that, you can throw a little money my way. Uh, that, that's always wonderful. And other than that... Peace, love, take care.